Welcome to Kentuckiana Real Talk, hosted by Jeremy Ward. If you enjoy the podcast, please subscribe on the podcast provider of your choice and consider subscribing to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel for more expert real estate insights. Now, let's start the show. Hello, it's Jeremy Ward with Ward Realty Services. Today, I have the pleasure uh, to interview Nick Wright, uh, owner of Wright Choice Home Inspections, Breathe Right Radon, and what else you up to? You, you, you run a drain, drain right sewer scope inspections. All right. <laughs> this guy has, I've watched him over the years in real estate, and he started with the home inspection. Really good company to work with, and he just keeps ask, uh, adding services to his business to help our clients. So, yeah, Nick, uh, it's been a pleasure working with you over the years and always do a good job for us. What, what's Right Choice up to these days? Uh, all kinds of stuff. We're just wanting to be the one-stop shop for everybody. I don't want the agents to have to do any extra work or anything. And um, getting to the size that we've gotten to, I realize having a lot of these services in-house is very beneficial mm-hmm. instead of subcontracting them. So it's working on building our business to better provide our clients with good service. It works great for us to be able to call one guy and, and know that he can take care of three or four items for us off the list to mm-hmm. ensure our clients get a good home and, and not run into a nightmare after closing. Right, right. Um, you had said something about the uh, sewer scopes. Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. It's something that we haven't had unless like we call a plumber or something. Tell me right. Me. So, I mean, plumbers have been offering uh, sewer scope inspections um, as part of their service for several years now. It's a newer technology, but uh, we've only really seen home inspectors doing it for the past maybe two to three years. Uh, we got into it. I think it's just an additional added service, uh, excellent value for customers. We charge less than what a plumber would charge. Um, but it gives you just like a full visual scope inspection of the inside of your sewer line from where it exits the home to the city main line. Uh, we look for any blockage, tree roots, uh, damage, bellies in the pipe, like standing water, anything like that, that could be problematic with your sewer line. Uh, provide you with a full detailed video report of that with our recommendations for contractors on how to correct them and stuff. No, I like it. You know, yeah. that's something we always talk about as a joke in the listing appointment. Uh, you know, we used to be septic inspections mm-hmm. and septic, and I always tell people, yeah, you know, pump your septic because nobody wants to deal with your crap. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of the same lines, yeah. you know, if you get in there and, and you get it inspected, then you're not dealing with somebody else's crap yeah. in the sewer line down the road. Yeah. So I think that's an awesome service. I mean, we, we recommend it on any age home, to be honest. Uh, there's a lot of new construction going on in the area, and we have seen lots of issues with brand new construction homes even, uh, just where they backfill that pipe and maybe don't compact the dirt super well and stuff. And then you got the equipment running out there and you get big bellies in the pipe or damage the lines. Right. Um, but yeah, you'd be surprised on brand new construction homes, the issues that we run into. You know, I wish I'd known you were doing it earlier. Uh, my aunt had just had to, you know, she had the old tile lines mm-hmm. from the sixties or whatever. Yeah. And so she had a plumber come out and they had to go down to her basement, like dig down the side of the foundation, mm-hmm. do all this work and tie into her existing sewer and uh, she started having backups and that's what exactly what had happened they had backfilled it but it had an air pocket or something mm-hmm. under it and when it settled the pipe actually got a bow in it and then you know she just can't get rid of her sewage it's going back in her basement yeah. so i'd say that's pretty good insurance you know to get that done when you're doing a home inspection oh yeah i mean for the price of it compared to the actual like cost of the work to be done i mean you pay us 300 dollars for the sewer scope and to fix a sewer line, you're easily minimum of several thousand dollars yes. in repairs. Two to three yep. real quick. Yep. I mean, they got to dig it up. Yep. You know, it's a mess. It'd be better to, to scope it and figure out what you're dealing with yep. in the beginning. So you've been doing uh, radon for quite some time as well. Yes, since uh, I think early 2021. Mm-hmm. Launched that company at a convenient time when COVID was uh, <laughs> 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 rampant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was a little slow starting with that. But uh, yeah, we do offer radon testing and radon mitigation on both sides of the river. So we're fully licensed in Indiana and Kentucky. Uh, really turn out some really good quality mitigation systems that adhere to all the EPA standards and stuff. But uh, speaking of that, January is Radon Action Month from the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, and they um, encourage you to have your home tested for radon in January. If those levels are elevated, they encourage you to have that mitigated as well. Nice. That'd be 
That'd be good. Now, I know with the weather, a lot of times, does it seem like that the radon's worse at certain times? If it's cloudy, if it's storming? So radon is, we explain this to clients every day, but it's a living, breathing thing. Uh, it fluctuates up and down with rain, snow, barometric pressure, anything like that. Uh, but anything that can increase the concentration levels going into your basement where you have any cracks or penetrations or anything like that is how it finds its way in there. So for people that have it, maybe they're first time home buyers, you know, I don't know that I'd heard about radon until I got into the real estate business. Mm -hmm. What exactly is radon gas? Uh, so radon gas, it's a naturally occurring radioactive gas. Um, this has all come into light more in like the probably 80s or so. They really started taking action on it like in the 90s, 2000s. But um, it's actually the second leading cause of lung cancer behind smoking. Wow. Um, it's predominant in our area. If you look at the EPA's map, there's just a big band across the Midwest going down to Florida and stuff. So we're in the hot zone for radon. But uh, yeah, people, um, I've actually met somebody that got lung cancer from radon and wow. was diagnosed with it from, and they pinned radon on it. So, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, you know, my wife and I, we built our house in 05. We didn't know anything about it. You know, I wasn't in the real estate yet. And, you know, as I got into the business and started working with you guys and some others, I realized, you know, it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we had our basement tested. It was high. Mm -hmm. And we felt horrible because our daughters, you know, would sleep in the basement. And that's where the kids play. Yep. So we went ahead and had it mitigated. And, you know, hopefully that's taken care of it. But uh, no, it's a real thing. And I mean, we see it, I would say in our home inspections, we see 80% of the time, especially in Harrison County. Yeah, uh, I think the the like statistics on in our area, I think it's like one in four homes have elevated levels. Uh, children are more susceptible to radon with their lungs being developing and everything really? like that. So uh, if you do have kids, you definitely want to make sure you get that address. You know, and it's not that expensive of, uh, of an item for you to come in and, and put up a general system. What's what's the systems usually run? I mean, I know you can't give an exact estimate. Yeah, I mean, e each home's different. Uh, our base price for a mitigation system is, I think it's eleven fifty, so very reasonable. Yeah. Uh, if you do get your home tested during a real estate transaction, it's only one hundred and seventy five dollars. Nice. Uh, and now that we're able to negotiate with sellers again and stuff, you can present those uh, results to the seller and ask them to have it mitigated for you. So you know, money what, well spent. Yeah. And what I, I, a lot of times I tell my buyers, you know, sometimes the buyer's like, well, we're not worried about it. I was like, well, I understand, but someday you're going to sell this house mm -hmm. and it's going to come up. It's here. Oh, we, we, my wife tells people that on the phone every day when we're talking to them about it, it's like, our first home, we weren't concerned about it. When we went to sell, we had to pay to mitigate it. So our second home, we tested and then had the seller do it. But uh, yeah, if you don't do it, it may come back to bite you. And you have to spend that money eventually. Either way, so. and why not protect yourself for the time you're there? Yeah. So, you know, I was I have to admit, I was one of those who was a little skeptic about it, but mm -hmm. it, I've got my home done as well yeah. now. <laughs> So now you're you're growing like by leaps and bounds. You've got some really good inspectors and people mm -hmm. in the business. Uh, did I see you're going into deeper into Kentucky? Yes. Yeah, so we actually just expanded to Lexington, Kentucky, nice. uh, with the slight downturn in the market this year. Um, worried about our volume slipping a little bit. So uh, Lexington being as close by as it is, it was just a no brainer to expand to there. Uh, we just hired a new growth coordinator there, Tatiana. Um, she's down there killing it currently. So we'll awesome. uh, be looking for a couple inspectors there soon. Sweet. Well, you know, I can't get on Facebook or, or Instagram without seeing you guys somewhere. Yeah. Like you, <laughs> You've really done a good job getting out in the community and helping people and, and getting your name out. And uh, it's, it's almost like, how's he in all these places at one time? <laughs> so I know you don't sit still much. How many inspectors have you got out on the streets working for you now? Uh, we are up to seven currently. Wow. Yeah. Got a couple other ones, uh, in the, in the books there that we're looking at right now, but always just trying to, uh, grow and expand, do bigger and better things. Well, we appreciate it with, you know, with you having more people, it helps our clients, mm -hmm. you know, you can get there quicker. You can, you can take care of, you know, somebody sick, it's no big deal. You got yeah. another guy that run over. Uh, where, you know, used to back when I got into real estate, you had just a few home inspectors yeah. and like you, you were doing yeah. it yourself, had a, you've got a, uh, 
history and construction and stuff, so you know what you're looking at. But, you know, you, you got to take a break, so it's mm -hmm. good to have these guys under you. It helps us because we weren't able to get home inspections completed in time because there were oh, not enough inspectors. I, mean, that, I think that's something that truly sets us above the rest right now is our um, quick, like quickness of service that mm -hmm. we can provide to you with the number of people that we have on staff. But uh, back when I was a one-man show by myself, I'd be booked out two weeks in advance sometimes. Yeah. And, uh, started to realize we were losing agents and stuff because you can't get that quick turnaround. So uh, we're currently at the point we can get you scheduled and like report in hand sometimes within like 48 hours. That's awesome. So That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I know usually when I call, I have you guys inspect the homes I buy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a believer in home inspections. Even if I'm tearing the thing down, like I want to know what's in it. Yeah. Is there any surprises? Is there anything that I'm not thinking about that's going to be a problem later? And you guys do a really good job of getting me the information and getting it back to me. Mm -hmm. now, we um, work with a lot of investors. Um, we were just talking about that the other day about like the, the reach that we've got with our clients and stuff. Um, and they're like, what's the like furthest away investor you've had? And I remember my wife talking to, and we still have him as a client, a guy from Dubai. Really? Got buying property in Southern Indiana and Louisville. And I'm like people across the world buying stuff in our Kentucky Indiana area. And it's just wild to think about. Well, it's so affordable here. Mm -hmm. You know, we I think we're very blessed to be in a, an area that, that the market hasn't really softened much. It's it's just so affordable. Even though you know a starter home at three hundred thousand don't feel like it's affordable, mm -hmm. but if you compare that to Denver, Florida, California, it's like a third of the price. Yeah, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Here. Yes, yep. and so it's kept us you know busy. Uh, where I hear other you know areas are starting to slow down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So. We're ready for 2024. I think it's going to be an extremely good year. I think there's going to be an opportunity here in the next few months for these buyers to actually maybe, you know, get some of these things paid for by the seller mm -hmm. and negotiate a little bit before they lower these interest rates. And oh, then, I'm, I'm then the prices are going to, to go back up. Yeah. You're going to be busy. Yeah. No, I just went to a, uh, a lunch and learn uh, last week, I think it was, mm -hmm. and there was a mortgage guy presenting, but he, uh, he was spot on for his predictions for 2023. Mm -hmm. And he was doing his predictions for next year. And he's predicting the rates to drop down to the five, mm -hmm. possibly fours again. So yep. Uh, I think it's going to be excellent for our market and turnaround on inventory and everything. Yeah, we're starting to actually see some inventory coming to the market, which is a big relief because mm -hmm. we've got plenty of demand. It's just a supply. Yeah. But uh, I think in the next few months, if, if buyers are out there, it's time to strike because yeah. you're, you're going to be able to negotiate a little bit. Once these rates drop, we're going to be right back to 2021, oh, 2020. Yeah. No, I mean, I've already seen it picking up. Our neighbor's house just went on the market. I think they posted it uh, on MLS like mid last week and mm -hmm. accepted offer on uh, Monday, and we're inspecting it today. So. Yeah. Well, you and I get a real view of what's actually going on in our local market where, you know, if you watch the news, it's kind of a general mm -hmm. nationwide forecast. And, and that's what I've been trying to tell people in our area. It's We're in the third best home uh, housing market in the United States right mm -hmm. now in this area, Kentucky. And so I just real, feel real fortunate that we get to work in this market. Yeah. Um, so what else has Right Choice got on, on the on the books for 2024? Uh, um, I'll go ahead and spill another teaser on uh -oh. Jeremy Ward uh -oh. here. Uh -oh. But uh, we are in the process of getting uh, our final accreditation to teach home inspection pre-licensing. Nice. So we're going to be opening up a school in 2024 and uh, be able to provide pre-licensing education for people wanting to become home inspectors uh, and then continuing education as well. So, Good. Yeah, uh, part of that thing too, we're going to be providing uh, continuing education to all the agents that we work with and everything. So it's nice. going to be a good thing and um, help teach inspectors the right way. <laughs> well, the right way. Uh, well, and it's good for the agents too, you know. Like, it was funny that the, um, when I got into real estate, the first course I took was a home inspection class. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was going to become a realtor. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, this is something I could do on the side. I was working at Ford. They paid for the classes. So one of the home inspectors come in, gave us all a class. We went out on the field and, and did things. But I learned so much that's helped me in my career as a real estate agent through that home inspection process. I mean, if you can get, you know, these guys can go and take their continuing ed with you. It's going to help not only them, but their clients. Oh, yeah. No, you I mean, know, some of the courses that my guys have gone through and everything, and there's mediocre at best. And I was like, mm -hmm. with anything I've done, I'm like, I want to do it bigger and better than what I've seen. So 
uh, I've got a guy that we've been, uh, we've hired to create all our programs and everything, but uh, it's just going to be phenomenal and a step above and beyond anything that's provided. So now is that something you're going to be able to do like uh virtual or are they going to come to to your office we'll have in person and virtual options um but yeah i, I encourage the in person and so yeah. i think any training like that the hands-on experience and seeing things uh in first person everything is the way to go but no absolutely. yeah we'll offer the virtual stuff for continuing education and everything yeah make sure you let us know i'd love to get our agents in that, that yeah. that's awesome uh, i've been kind of you know we've done some um inspections like you know had our had our uh, agents go to some of the inspections and mm -hmm. try to learn but we always feel like man we're kind of getting in your way too because you're trying to do a job while you're there and i don't want to take from the clients you know mm -hmm. uh hours that they've got you there so no that's awesome yeah I'm really we have we always encourage the agents to be part of the inspection process as well as our clients uh i think it's an educational time for uh, the agent and the client to actually learn more about the home uh they can learn things that we're looking at and so if they don't go through that home for instance like they can go look at another property and they're like oh yeah remember they they said look at this look at that but uh we're all about education on like during the inspection process and take pride in that yep absolutely and it shows i mean uh, you didn't grow to be where you're at by doing a bad job yeah you know it's because you did a good job <laughs> yeah. and we've watched you do it and it's just been amazing to watch you and your wife grow it's uh pretty entertaining to see. I mean, you've got it on Facebook. And I just watch it go, go, go. Uh, listen, I was talking to an insurance agent the other day and he was telling me how much the, the, the insurance game's changing with the roofs and stuff. Are you guys seeing a lot of problems or, or uh, you don't really deal with the insurance so much of it, but if you see a problem with the roof, you're letting the, the client know. And I'm just wondering if you're hearing any feedback because a lot of times we can kind of help the, uh, the client, you know, the homeless person says, Hey, the roof's, got some hell damage or it's mm -hmm. got, you know, whatever you need to get a roofer to come out and look at it. And the insurance companies are just, they're not wanting to cover it. I, I've seen it more with underwriters. Underwriters? Yeah. So, I mean, we, we're getting calls like a couple of a week now where they're one, like we've noted termite damage and they're mm -hmm. wanting us to verify if it's active or if it's been treated. I'm like, that's not our job to do right. that. Like we're more of a general specialist. Uh, and when we see things, we do recommend professionals, but uh, I mean, you mentioned the roof damage. Like if we noted a couple missing shingles or something, the underwriters are like, how much life is in this roof? Can you all say uh -huh. it's in good shape? And I'm like, we try to stay out of that stuff. Uh, the underwriters really need to work on getting the professional opinions on that from like licensed contractors. Right. You're just there to flag it. Mm -hmm. So we know we've got an issue. Then the contractor will settle whether it's good, bad, or, yeah. you know, whatever. Uh, I just, things are really changing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just funny. You're seeing it on the underwriter side. We are too. Uh, the termite, I was reading one of the termite reports I got back on a house I bought a couple years ago. And I was like, you know, I still don't realize. Know if I know this says I've got damage, or there. I mean, there obviously had been damage, mm -hmm. but are they still there? And I think the forms are a little bit restricting. You know, they, it's a, is what that was a, it twenty twenty when they changed? I think so. Yeah, they changed the form. So um, we work with Black Diamond Pest mm -hmm. Control for all of our termite uh, inspections and treatments. But uh, when I was explained the change in the form, they basically said. Um, unless the seller or homeowner has documentation of that home being treated and can provide that during the transaction, they still have to recommend treatment, whether True. they see if it's been treated or not, because nobody has documentation on it. So, I mean, all homeowners really need to stay on top of that stuff yeah. and be able to provide that if they, if they have had that treatment service done. And I mean, there again, uh, you know, termite treatment usually cost me a thousand bucks or something. Mm -hmm. It's just insurance once again. Yeah. Because a lot of these homes, you know, they're rentals for me, and I'm not there seeing, oh, I got a, a little mud tube here, a mm -hmm. shelter tube. Uh, you know, the renters don't tell me about it, yeah. so we go ahead and treat uh, as part of our kind of our systems of doing a rental. Yeah, so, I've but, seen a lot of uh, new home construction builders uh, pre-treating their homes right now, too. So really? That's a good added value yeah. as well. I mean, we did it during our construction and, like, guaranteed no termites for 30 years with the stuff that they put down. But That's good. Yeah. Well, and you got your treated plate, and that's mm -hmm. what everybody used to, to lean on. But, I mean, if you get a crack in the floor or they get into the inside, they'll find a way around that treated plate. Yeah, and you, you may not <laughs> ever see them either. I mean, no. I, one of the worst homes I ever inspected uh, – I saw like a little bit of drywall damage. It looked like it had been repaired or something. And I, I just kind of looked past it thinking it's normal drywall damage. 
uh, I get up into the attic and the roof structure is just completely eaten up with termites. And I'm like, oh my God, they've eaten all the way from the ground up into the attic. Uh, the home buyer asked the seller to have it like evaluated. They pulled the drywall out, whole corner of the house, just completely eaten up, like ready to crumble down. And you would have never seen you it never see you it. had an inspection done. I, you know, I hadn't been exposed to a lot of termite damage uh, until I got into the real estate mm -hmm. business. And uh, one of my investors bought a, a concrete block building. And he was like, oh, yeah, this thing's solid, you know, and it had interior walls. He went to tear the walls out to repurpose it. And everything looked like all the, the studs looked like just stacks of paper. Hmm. And I couldn't believe it was all still standing. But you're exactly right. Like, it could be totally gone. Yeah. And there's just enough there to hold the drywall up. But, yeah. like, he was pushing his finger through the studs because they were just like paper. The termites oh, they'll, would come they'll up. They'll find their way, way in anywhere. And uh, it's, that's a common misconception, too. When we ask clients if they want to add the termite, they're like, no, my home is made out of brick. And I'm like, well, <laughs> right behind that brick, you've got wood and wood framing. And uh, they, it's hard to explain it sometimes yeah. that they could find their way in through the tiniest little hole or crack. And you may never see them, like I said. But. Yeah, they're sneaky. Mm -hmm. And man, that they're, they're, the damage, is it's done quickly. Mm -hmm. I don't know how quick they can eat, but... Uh, I bought a house a few years back, and I think I ended up replacing uh, 42 floor joists and about 30 sheets of OSB, which Jeez. gets expensive <laughs> in COVID times mm -hmm. uh, because we yeah, we knew we had termites. The inspector found the termites. But I was like, well, we'll just rip it apart here and figure it out. Ain't no big deal. What well, was more than we thought. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so we had Black Diamond out to do some treating there, and, and along, you know, we're all new. and. All new and treated now. Back when a <laughs> two by ten was a hundred dollars. Yeah, board. I think I was paying like thirty five or, or no, it was like sixty five dollars for a sheet of uh, three quarter OSB floor, you know, tongue and groove. And I was sitting there looking at a skid of it, going, "Man, if they would have just treated this with termites, I wouldn't have this problem." Mm -hmm. but, so yeah, it's a uh, been a been an interesting ride this real estate game. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely looking forward to next year's see, see with the presidency uh, election and um, just see how the market changes and stuff. Well, you know, I feel like that it's going to be a good market because, for one, it is a, an election year. For two, the supply and demand. I mean, in southern Indiana, Kentucky, there's no supply. There's tons of demand, so the prices are going to stay good. And I do think there's going to be a lot of pent-up uh, demand coming off the off the bleachers, so to speak, when these rates drop. Mm -hmm. So I think we better get some rest over over the holidays here yeah. and get ready to run. You may see a <laughs> second version of COVID coming around with, oh, the, yeah. with the market like it is. Yeah, I mean, if they do get into the fours, I mean, golly. Uh, I mean, that's the only thing that slowed it down. It was mm -hmm. just the interest rates. Yeah. So it's going to be exciting. Yeah, we're, we're getting ready to build a new construction home next year, hopefully. Uh, it's the plan, but with our interest rate that we refinanced during COVID, I'm like, it's going to be tough to sell our house. Like, it's hard to let, let go. That, let that rate go. It's hard to let go of those rates, and that's another issue. We're not seeing a lot of homes come to the market because mm -hmm. I mean, if you're at 2 3 it's like, you know what? Um, brothers and sisters, you, you guys might have to share a room for another year or so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're still young, you know. Yeah. Uh, we don't we don't want to have to to buy a new house at seven percent, but uh, you know we've had a lot of good luck with the buy downs, getting these rates bought down mm -hmm. and getting people in these homes and and it's working out. But uh, are you seeing uh, sellers providing that to help buy down the rate? For yeah, the it, it's it's. I mean, why would you reduce twenty or thirty thousand dollars when you could just give a seller concession of five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars, and that that buyer's saving one hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars over thirty years. Mm -hmm. So it's the best of both worlds. The the seller still gets a good dollar for his house. He's just peeling off a little bit for basically closing cost. And then that gets the buyer's rate down where they can actually afford the house rather than stripping the list price mm -hmm. down so far. And that's been a good way to to keep everybody happy. And, yeah, and I've heard smooth. of that tactic. And I mean, I'm, I'm hearing a lot more of it recently. So That and assumable rates. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these guys, when we go and list these homes, that's one of the first questions I ask them is, is your rate assumable? And I had an investor over in Louisville um, the other day. We we're listening to a piece, and he called me back. He said, "Actually, it is." I said, "What's your rate?" He's like, "It's four percent." I was like, "So that first, you know, say his mortgage, he owed two hundred thousand, and it's a four hundred thousand dollar home. That first two hundred thousand will be assumed on that two percent or three percent mm -hmm. rate, whatever it is. I think four is what his was. 
and then the buyer gets a second mortgage at the normal rate for the remainder. So when you blend those rates, your average is probably four and a half, five percent. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're still in really good shape. And then we offer a free refi uh, through some of our lenders. So if the rate you know gets down below where we bought it down to, if it makes sense, they'll refi you for free. Yeah. So we just say marry the house and date the rate. Date the rate. <laughs> yeah, you can always change change the rate. And right now, it's better to get the house while they're you know sellers are wanting to get out of them and want to get into something the first of the year. Mm -hmm. They'll negotiate with you. They'll pay that rate most of the times that buy down, and uh, you don't have to fight the the other agents yeah. over it. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, Nick, I really appreciate you coming in, spending some time with us today. Uh, if you anybody wanted to reach out to you to get some home inspections. Some, of any kind done, what would be the best way to get a hold of your crew? Uh, you can reach our business number at any time. That number is 502-822-6484 or check us out at yourrightchoice.com uh, or reach out to us on any social media platform. We're on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, just got a good presence all around. Yeah. No, you've done a great job. I think it'd be easy to find Mr. Wright and the right choice here. For more local real estate information, please like and subscribe to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel.